Okay, so this is uh, chapter seven, right? Uh, we're really exploring uh, nonlinear uh, models. And the chapter is based, you know, the data set that they use is the, the weight data set from the ISLR second edition. And one of the things that I found very interesting about splines that I didn't, you know, I didn't basically, I didn't understand it or it was, I didn't pay too much attention because usually splines is something that you don't use often, right? Uh, you use more linear regression, more, you know, logistic, et cetera. So one of the things that I found uh, in my research, and I'm going to read it here, is that remember the polynomial uh, uh, fit that we did uh, back in, I think it was chapter five, uh, you know, uh, moving, moving, moving from linear, extremely linear to the polynomial regressions, right? So one of the difference, and you can kind of step through it, scaffold through it, you know, to understand more about what is spline plus splines are, is that the main difference, and is I'm quoting from a from a post from Andrea uh, Perlato. Uh, he says that the main difference between polynomial and spline is that the polynomial regression gives you a single polynomial model, you know, throughout all the, 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 the data that, that you're fitting. While the splines is more of a piecewise. In other words, we're taking segments of that, you know, of, of, of that data. And then in each segment, what we're doing is fitting what is called a, 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 poly, a polynomial. Usually it's a third degree, a cubic. The QB polynomial, that's usually the default uh, that, that we're using. So it's good to understand that because it's, 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 it's a sophistication from that polynomial regression that they were doing you know, in the previous chapter. So uh, I, 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 I took the base R because the base R is easier to follow, you know, in, my, in my opinion, it's easier to follow for understanding what splines are than the tidy models, okay? You know, it's good to have the tidy models in your toolbox, but also this base R gives you a more step-by-step -step understanding of what is going on. So the example that they give, they were studying the relationship between age and uh, I believe it's wage, right? The salary, age and salary. And as we can see in that plot, that scatter plot, we can see that Apart from all what is going on in that, uh, in that plot, we can see that the relationship you know, is not really linear. In other words, there's not a linear regression, a linear model that can explain fully uh, what is going on between the age, the age and the wage. So that's why you use spline. And the example here, the word, we're doing a spline, uh, giving predefined uh, points within the age in a range, right? Which in the age range, we're giving uh, predefined points, which are called knots, okay? That's the, that's the spline uh, uh, argument. And we're taking arbitrarily, we're taking uh, the age of 25, the age of 40 and the age of 60. And this is the, the curve that you're getting from the, you know, from that spline using the BS. Okay, which is the B spline uh, uh, matrix. Okay, so and we and we saw that this in the uh, in the presentation that Jim uh, did. If you are if you are hearing some noise background, is the gardener? <laughs> okay, it's Thursday is gardening uh, I do. Okay, so any any questions here? Okay, so how do we define splines? We can define it by the nuts, okay? But the, those, those pivot points that are going to be doing the polynomials within that, within that range, right? But then there's another concept here. And it's, it is the concept of what is called the degrees of freedom. And you know that in statistics, for example, you have, you have seen that uh, this, this concept, right? Degrees of freedom in terms of how the statistic is, uh, you know, is generated by degrees of freedom. For example, in the chi-square, 
you know that the curve of the sky square is defined by the degrees of freedom and other, you know, other, other, uh, other distributions. So in this case, because we have a degree of three, right? The cubic, the cubic polynomial, right? Degree of three. We already have those three degrees of freedom, right? So we're going to add for to the spline, right? Two are going to add those three degrees of freedom plus the three nuts. So in our spline of three nuts, the 25, 40, and 60, we have a total of six uh, degrees of freedom, okay? And that's how it's defined, you know, the polynomial is defined within this range. Why am I talking about degrees of freedom? Because that's another way that you can define the spline. Instead of uh, defining pre-existing pre nuts, you can define the function BS by the degrees of freedom, okay? So let me go to the, my console in R. Can you see it? The console, R? You can see it, right? Yes. Okay, so if you go to help, right? If you go to help in degrees of freedom, which is at the lower, uh, lower right of my screen, okay? I'm trying to see if I can, you know, augment a little bit. Uh, you see that that function has in the predictor variable, has the degrees of freedom, has the nuts and the degree, et cetera. So these are all arguments that you can use to define your spline. And those are parameters that you can play with it. So to see which is the best fit, the best spline fitted for, for the model that we're, what we're doing. So since we are defining those, the degree of freedom at six, right? Which is the, the standard, the, the three degrees, the polynomial three, uh, third degree, and then the three nuts. What it's going to do is that when we, when you use the degrees of freedom instead of the nuts, the function is going then to assign a nuts, okay? And how is going to do it? Well, if there are three nuts, then it's going to use the percentile of that distribution, okay? So if we go here to the, to the console, right? And we do a summary, okay? Remember that the summary gives you the minimum, the maximum, and the percentiles, okay? So we're going to do the summary for that age, for that, for that variable age. And as you can see, the first percentile, which is the 25%, is 33.75. The median is the 50, 50th percentile is 42. And the third uh, uh, quantile, which is the 75% is 51. And those are the ones that precisely our function is used. Okay, when you define those uh, degrees of freedom as states. Okay, uh, stay with me, stay with me. So I look a little, a little bit more about what was the relationship between the nuts and the degrees of freedom, okay, in the splines. And it's very interesting because there's a, there's a, there's a relationship. For example, the degrees of freedom, if you are using a cubic, which is degrees three, is going to give you three nuts, okay, for the spline. If we change the degree, let's say to seven, to seven, the three is going to be fixed because we're using a degree of three, a polynomial, a cubic polynomial. But then the nuts is going to increase to four. So the three degree of the polynomial and the four is going to give you then the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom is a way to try to, you know, get a better fit of that spline to your, you know, your, your data. Okay, but there, there's, a, there's a drawback to this, right? And the drawback is that if you start increasing those degrees of freedom, you're going to get a more uh, wigglier, wigglier uh, line, okay? And I'm, I'm going to show you how, 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 how does that look. Okay, let me go back uh, to the example, right? Okay, so this is the line for uh, the degrees of freedom, we're using here what is called a natural spline, okay? Instead of the BS, uh, deep spline, 
This is more like a smooth, a natural spline. So you don't get that, you know, that piecewise uh, there. And you get a, a smoother line. That's another function. But then if you go here, okay, and we're doing a line, a spline, a smoothing spline of 6.8 de uh, degrees of freedom, which is, uh, uh, you know, you're using a cross validation there. And then what are you comparing with a 16 uh, degrees of freedom? In other words, 16 degrees of freedom, that means that we're going to have the cubic polynomial three and then 13, 13 nuts, okay, for that function. And as you can see that red, which is 16 degrees of freedom, uh, it's a little bit more, you know, wiggly, right? You know, it, can, it, it, it kind of, you know, gets that noisy, noisy feeling of that curve. As you can see, the 6.8 degrees of freedom is kind of a more smooth uh, line. This is important because usually when you incorporate more noise uh, to your model, uh, that's what we call the overfitting. Uh, you know, uh, it, it causes overfitting. In other words, you are getting some information that is not the true information, the true signal. And then your model doesn't generalize as well as a simpler model with a more smoother line, okay? So uh, the other thing about the, this lab, it incorporates, I think Jim called this function the LOSH, L-O-E-S-S. -S. Sometimes I hear it as low S also. Uh, low S is okay. Jim? Yeah, yeah, low S yeah, is okay. Uh, that 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 yeah. same spelling word is applied in uh, geology to a certain kind of terrain, okay. and and in Western Iowa right. and in Nebraska they call that lush. But I think in math lush. it's okay. low s. So you're right. I, I've heard as low s. You know, it was the first time when you mentioned it was the first time that I you know heard it as lush. But hey, you know, English is very flexible in that sense. <laughs> You can pronounce almost, you know, any, any way and, you know, you can get by. <laughs> anyway, so in the LUSH, what we're doing is like a spline, we're doing what is called a local polynomial, right? Local polynomial fitting, smoothing fitting. And as you can see in the LUSH, that is, uh, you see it in ggplot also in the method, right? The smoother method that you see, you have LM, you have a uh, LO, uh, lowest LUSH, okay? So in this one, uh, what we're doing is uh, changing the span, in other words, the smoothness of the line. A, a greater span of the, of, of the lowest uh, uh, function gives you a more wiggly, just like the increased degrees of freedom on the spline. Okay. And basically, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it for, for splines. Okay. Ah, well, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, there is... In tiny models, there is a model, an engine called Mars, okay? And I, I heard this from one of the Julia Silgi uh, blogs. Uh, she used Mars, you know, for modeling, uh, you know, one of the tiny, tiny uh, data sets. And I didn't understand Mars until I went through this Plines uh, chapter. And the Mars is really a multivariate adaptive regression Plines. It's based on splines, okay? And you can use it for nonlinear, uh, you know, nonlinear uh, relationships between your uh, predictors, okay? So that's something that also is good to, you know, it's good to know because sometimes, you know, you you use something and you really don't know, you know, what's under the hood, right? You know, what what, what, what is the mechanism that is using? Now, you know, with Mars, now you know that the mechanism is really uh, regression splines. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I know. I, 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 I didn't know it until I, you know, went through the research and I said, hey, Mars, you know, what's that? Oh, the splice. Okay. Now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, one, one more thing. Uh, Jim, did you... Uh, you know, commit the changes in chapter seven, uh, you know, for the book, for the book down. I, I put in my version of stuff, it's all clear. Yeah. Okay, good. Because then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pull it and then incorporate, you know, some of this yeah. stuff. 
Okay, so is that so we don't have any conflict? That, that's what I'm you know asking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's all it's all available. Okay, excellent. So I'll be doing this uh, this week. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let, let's have a look at the GAM mm -hmm. uh, model. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what what is GAM? Okay. GAM it means generalized additive models. And uh, as, as the, the name says, it's um, a way to generate additive models. That means uh, uh, the sum of uh, variables that compose a model. Uh, just a little introduction of the few things I found uh, interesting um, and just to be clear, the generalized additive models allow us to extend the methods to deal with multiple predictors uh, and provide a general framework for extending standard linear model by allowing non-linear functions of each of the variables while maintaining additivity. So I just stop here a second to uh, expand on this. Uh, when we make a linear model, uh, we do a simple function. We use the predictors as they are, and sometimes just we select for one predictor, uh, which is the most correlated with our response variable. Then uh, when we go forward uh, with our investigations, we may want to adapt better uh, our model to our da data um, for some reasons. Um, and um, so when we add the splines or just a slightly modification of the predictors uh, that we put inside the model, this, um change from a linear model to a non-linear model okay so we apply a function to our predictors inside the model and this model is not a linear model anymore okay uh in in case of uh, gam models the GAM models with this uh, feature that they have to, uh, to be additive, so you some various predictors, that means that it is not just, uh, um, so it's a multiple regression or multiple classification model, first thing. Second thing is that we are adding functions to our predictors, so we are switching from uh, linear model to a non-linear model. So um, just like linear models, GAMS can be applied to both quantitative and qualitative responses. So we can use, for example, in case of tidy models, we can use uh, mode regression and mode classification. So both of them. Uh, standard, standard software, such as the GAM function in R can be used to fit GAMs using smoothing splines via an, an approach known as a backfitting. Um, this uh, is just a way to say that you can use the function and then apply the modification with other function inside the model function. The main limitation of GAMS is that the model is restricted to be additive. So if you want to, for example, with many variables, for important interaction can be missed. But there is a turnaround of this thing. So then you can add 
an interaction term by considering them within a function. Apologies for the dog. So for fully ge um, general models, we uh, have to look for even more flexible approaches, such as random forests and boosting, if we want to go forward and do a bit more uh, articulate investigation. So we use, uh, um, I've added study models, but then I didn't use it for some reasons that we see in the next chapters. So we used the wage data set. And in particular, what, what we want is to predict the wage or better, our response variable is set up as to be the wage. And then we uh, investigate the, the, the variation of the wage with the GAM uh, models uh, using these two uh, predictors, year and age. So this is the, the first plot as a first visualization that you already shown us, Ricardo. Uh, it's just the same, just to see how they change, how they behave, what, what is the general trend. But then uh, using GAM, we can do two, two things. So as um, previously, we can make a linear model and then apply the, the, the splines. And this is a very basic explanation of what GAM is. So it's a model, linear model, but with a function, in this case, the uh, natural spline, applied to the predictors. And as you can see, there is a plus and within the two predictors, within the function of the two predictors. So this is, uh, additive means that it is an additive <laughs> model. Okay. Uh, the book uh, and even the previous court mentioned some two packages for GAMS, which is GAM uh, and the other one. And now I'm, I'm not recalling. Uh, M. Give me a second. So the the other one is. Uh, the one that we, this MGCB, GAM, uh, which is the one that is used um, within tidy models. I can find my, where is it? Okay, uh, I put in the chat, this one here. So, um, this, um, uh, in this case, we do, we use uh, the GAM package uh, for, for, for the GAM uh, function. And um, we use the spline function instead of uh, the natural spline. And this is because as you said, it's a bit more like articulated uh, uh, function uh respect to um natural spline so we are just like apply a function we can use like any any function that you uh consider to be useful within your investigation in 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 the gam model but the mean the meaning is this for for an additive model so adding function within predictors function of predictors within model. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, this is the, to uh, visualize the result of the model, we can easily use the, the plot function on the, the GAM model, on the model. Uh, and the plot uh, basically applies a function for um, that automatically uh, for plotting GAM uh, models. So we can see, for example, the two predictors, year and uh, age. Give me a second. Uh, just, just a second. Why is it? 
he, I think he wants to be part of the conversation somehow. Yeah. yeah. I have something to say. I have something to say. <laughs> about that. Maybe, maybe in the evening when uh, like, <laughs> it's usually dinner time, it's probably playtime too. Yeah, yeah, this is my time, not your time. <laughs> exactly. I have a cat that every six hours, man, it's like a clock. Every six hours, he wants food. <laughs> uh, he gets um, feisty. He gets really feisty, you know. <laughs> our, um, our little cat um, is at my feet sleeping. Um, oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. She, she'll be up briefly at noon, and, and then she'll settle in for another nap. But, Correct. Yeah, that's all they do, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you're right. It's like <laughs> clockwork. Our our pets have oh, yeah. their own clocks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too good with her, you know, because anytime she asks, I, I'll bring it down. You no, know? so she doesn't need to. She, she doesn't need nothing because it's it's all all done, all good. But you know. <laughs> She makes complaints and I, I, I'll do something for her. So she keeps doing. But anyway. Give her a chew toy or something. <laughs> okay. So as, as we can see uh, in our model, we have used year, age, and education. Okay. So the first two predictor we have made, uh, for the first two predictor, we have made a modification using a function. For the third, uh we we use it as it is and uh, even even added a different number of degree of freedom uh, for year uh, we have used it four for age used five and then you can see that there is a slightly difference in uh, um uh, within uh these variables and uh, the response you can see, for example, um, understand that the first two, which is are the most important ones for 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 what we are in investigating for wage, they they mostly have a linear trend growing um, with the growing of the years and growing of the age. So. Um, for, for education, we haven't made any modifications, but we can see as well, there is a sort of uh, uh, increasing in the level of education. And so uh, we can consider the, these three variables and do a bit more of investigations. There is this function mentioned, the plot gam, which is the same function that the plot uh, recall when we uh, mm, uh, use a GAM model. So basically the, the plot function automatically use this call, recall this plot.gam function to make the, uh, the plot. And um, so even here, Uh, we, we have the three uh, predictors as before, but with a different uh, like representations. Um, we can see them better just because they are um, on top of each other, because they are just the same. But, but then uh, uh, oh. uh, we, we can see that for example, for age, there are three peaks. Also, the three most important uh, um, steps that are the most influential influence one uh, for for our for for our model. So, like the uh, growing up to forty, then slowing down to fifty. 50 and then grow it back up uh, up again uh, up to like uh, 60 and then uh, slowing down uh, obviously because we are talking about the a the the wage uh, and 
somehow they <laughs> There is a peak and then it slightly decreases. Uh, Farika, just one comment yeah. on the on, on the age. Uh, that uh, plot basically corroborates what we can hypothesize about the relationship between age, age groups, and uh, and salary. Is that you know in your productive years, like say say from twenty to forty, you should have you know a rise, a steady rise. In that in that in that salary, then when you reach a plateau, right between forty and sixty, it is is where you are, you know, uh, steady. In other words, you know, you, you you don't move that 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 much. You know, you are you are looking for a, 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 a future retirement, etc. And then from sixty, you know, to you know to the last days, uh, your basically you know your income is more steady or even uh, lower than it was than it was before. So it corroborates, you know, the the the, the assumptions that you could yeah. you could have in in in, in that group. Mm -hmm. Same same thing can be done with this MG uh, CV package, uh, which uses the same the same GAMP function. And the previous court mentioned the fact that uh, um, this one is a little more uh, Bayesian than the other one, which is more frequentist. Uh, but uh, at the end, if you if you check the results, are uh, exactly the same, um, and uh, then then we can as well as always predict our result using um, new data or um, as did it here the the original data set in case we just want to. Uh, check the residuals. We we are not. This is when we are not meant to predict to use the model as a model, uh, as a general model for even when for new data. But uh, in this case, we just want to uh, consider our observation and see um, how uh, the model uh, behave. Um, looking at the residuals. And uh, then uh, interesting things, uh, because in the chapter there was a mention of local regression. And uh, this, this um, we, we can use uh, these two uh, features of local regression and the LO function um, for, uh, for example, the local regression, for for the age term with a span of uh, no point seven, and the LO function to create interactions. So this way, for example, using the low LO uh, function, we can make an interaction term with age. Um, as what what is the the difference um, in this case for for example we have made this new model this new gam model uh, which is slightly different uh, from um, the one that we have just made before uh, and uh, for for age we have used uh, we have applied the local regression uh, and so <laughs> use it as interaction term okay uh, as you can see, there is, uh, if we uh, go back here, um, the, there is no much. There is no much difference um, as well as before, but we can. Uh, oh, I don't know what happened today. Stop. Okay. Um, can can you see? Can, can you see any differences within uh, these two models? Uh, as you can see here, we had the, the peak at forty, while here it's like smoother. So we 
the peak is slightly uh, shifted uh, towards the middle of the, uh, the age range. So we now have more clear peak that lets us to understand better uh, because we, we are interested in investigating wages, for example. So the level of wages. So around, it it's now clear that this uh, top of the mountain is the, the um, is the bit that we where we what we should focus on basically because this is the top high level of of the wages within these ages. Um, and then he, the the lab the lab uh, suggested this other Akima package. Uh, which is for making plots uh, um, uh, three dimension. So and we can use the low function for make, for the making an interaction term within two predictors. Before we use it just for with age. And that was considered just a local regression. Uh, while here we are applying to two, two predictors, so we are applying um, interaction time. Now, I cannot see it very well in the, within this plot. Uh, but it, that's that's not very. Uh, I, I can't turn it. I can't do anything. Uh, but let, let let's consider that as a. Um, this is the peak as before, uh, and then there is something like the, the, the mountain, the curve, the bell, the cu bell curve uh, on the other side. This is the education as well, grouped by the different uh, level, and uh, obviously advanced degrees. Uh, corresponds to a higher level. Then finally, uh, I like to just recall this bit because um, I found modeling that this is very important. Uh, when you want to add a function or just a formula um, within your predictors, you can, you, you can use this uh, identity function. So, if you, for example, want to adapt, uh, change the units of your predictor, you can do it inside the model with this uh, identity function. Uh, and this is very interesting because you can do any formulation inside the identity function and it grabs you just as the same as you made a modification in the data set. So, this um, other model is made uh, with splines and uh, just fi just fixing filtering the wage uh, higher than 250 and then uh, setting everything as a family binomial which is just as the same as we did it before but it, it's a different way to apply uh, the, the binomial um, the binomial behavior behavioral. So the uh, the plot here is completely different for uh, year, for example. And uh, here is the one the, the predictor that we haven't made a modification of. And as you can see, uh, the two lines that should be um, the lower and the upper bound uh, are not uh, uh, behaving mm, so are behaving strangely. Okay, so they should be one on top of, of the other. Uh, while age, uh, which is this, uh, use it with a spline function still uh, replicating the same the same behavior I, even because it's just the same as the things that we did it before 
So here we haven't made any modification and here we have used a function uh, predictor. So as you can see, there is a, a difference. So that would be uh, clear that when you use uh, uh, in this condition, that would be better if you use a spline function within years as well. Okay. Um, what else I can say? So uh, this is a different way to, to look at the, the same thing as before. So here can be seen um, more clearly. And uh, I think it's all. It's everything. I don't know if you have been able to hear some uh, anything of the things I've said. Uh, do you have any questions I, I, about? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I posted in the chat that the, that low uh, local regression is the is the lowest is the lowest fit in in GAM. Okay, so it's our lush friend, you know, back to the action, back in action. 